Welcome to Bergen Stages Television, our entertainment magazine here at Bergen Community College. I'm Jim Bumgardner, your host. There's something very magical going on over at the Anna Maria Saccone Theater, and that's the rehearsals for the wonderful James Alpine, Stephen Sondheim musical, Into the Woods. And what better way to chat about it than with two of the actors from the show. So welcome to the show, Manny Marquez and Hi. Professor Lee Janitis. Welcome, Hi. guys. So How's it going? Us. Thank you. Great. Good to have you here. We're going to talk really specifically about into the woods in just a few minutes, but I want our audience to get to know you guys just a little bit better. Mm -hmm. So Lee, how did we get here today? Um, <laughs> wh where are you from? Where are you, where you learn this theater stuff? Oh, uh, well, you know, I've been doing theater since I was really young, probably about five or six years old, and then, um, you know, pretty much did perform uh, maybe a couple of shows a year all throughout up to high school, did theater in high school like many of the, the students here. Mm -hmm. um, and then decided to uh, also do theater in college. So I uh, earned a BFA in musical theater from the University of Michigan, and then and also a BA in English because I liked both the musical theater and the English. Uh -huh. And uh, so you did them yeah, simultaneously at the same time. Wow! I didn't yeah, that. and I, I actually finished in four years. So I was taking you know, wow. twenty credits wow. a semester and taking summer classes and all, all that kind of thing. Uh -huh. So uh, so it was it was very intense. And then. Um, after college, you know, I did theater for uh, for a bit, and then decided I wanted to uh, really focus on English, and uh, right. ended up going back to graduate school for for English, mm -hmm. and that's how I ended up here at Bergen. So I'm a faculty member. I've right. been right. teaching at Bergen for uh, 18 years. Now. Uh huh. Wow, 18. <laughs> 18 wow. Years. How it goes by so quickly. I think it we does. got here about the same time. I think yeah, was, probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's good. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. So I'll get specific about some of this that we've just chatted about. But Manny, how did you get here? Where did you? What's your trail to? My trail to, to get to. Bergen. Well, I'm actually from uh, Bergenfield, which is about 15 to 20 minutes away. Mm -hmm. When I usually drive, it's about 30. I like to take my time. Um, <laughs> but in my high school, we actually didn't have a theater program. Huh. So that was kind of tough, the transition from not having theater to going to theater. But in my high school, I did do um, the choirs, and then I auditioned uh, for the honors choir at my school. Um, and I was into that for about four for all four years, I was in choir, and then for three years, I was in the honors choir. Mm -hmm. um, and then the transition to coming to Bergen, um, I actually did my first show here out, out of everything. Um, it was Enemy of the People. Ever? That was the first That was my first ever production oh my I ever did. And I, I got the, uh, I was so honored. I got the role of uh, Captain Horrister, right. which was actually like a great role. Mm -hmm. And just the whole process of going through everything was such an experience. And now I've just been doing a lot of shows here at Bergen. I was in, uh, last semester was um, Guys and Dolls. Mm -hmm. That was my first musical, uh -oh. and that was such a great experience. And now yeah. doing Into the Woods, uh -huh. it's, it's such a magical experience, too. Okay. And what made you decide, because you didn't have the background in, in theater in high school, what made you come here and say, I'm going to be a theater major? What? Um, actually, after high school, I took a year off, mm -hmm. and I went to California. I have family out in California, and uh, my cousins are in a band. And I got, I was able, I was so lucky I was able to tour with them uh, throughout some of the country. And just watching them just go up on stage and perform and just loving every moment of it, it made me realize that I, this is what I want to do. Okay. I, I want to wake up and be happy with what I'm doing. So I just decided like, what will make me really happy is acting. And like, I just was like, all right, got to follow my dream now. Uh, good That's for you. Great. Good, good. And, and Lee, when you uh, did musicals, what musicals did you do before? Uh, oh, well, let's see. I mean, in, in you know, way, high way back college, in high school, are, yeah. I actually played Lori in Oklahoma, uh, which is it's just. And like we a, saw that in know, history yeah. class. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, a bit laughable now, you know, the, <laughs> because I'm such a uh, an alto mezzo soprano mm -hmm. to, to have done Lori in to Oklahoma. To do the soprano, yeah. Um, but then uh, my senior year, I was Dolly in Hello Dolly, at uh, University of Michigan. Uh, you know, some of the some of the roles I did it was Raffaella in uh, Grand Hotel, mm -hmm. um, and then I was the, I played the baker's wife in a production of Into the Woods, Great. which was Great. Pr probably my favorite uh, role. Be I think because I love this musical, this musical. so much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I've done that uh, that as well. And, and then you was. continue to sing. Yes. Uh, I mean, I, you had a little combo that you... Yes, uh, I have. Um, I've been singing, for the past few years, I've been singing with my musical partner. He's a jazz guitarist, Larry mm -hmm. Newcomb. And um, actually, just last year, I recorded a couple of his original songs on his latest album. Wow. And uh, it, we recorded with Bucky Pizzarelli, the jazz uh, guitarist, mm -hmm. who's actually uh, local, originally from Patterson. Oh, wow. Uh, but uh, he, Bucky Pizzarelli is this you know, fantastic uh, jazz guitarist, and his son is John Pizzarelli. So... Uh, to, to work with um, 
those folks was really exciting. Oh, that's really exciting. And so. to do a, an original tune. Uh -huh. you know? Yeah, which is which yeah. is really wonderful. And so, Manny, uh, being a theater major here, what uh, are some of the requirements for you to have to do this? You're going to have to take a course with Lee. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's going to be. Wait, are you taking my course? <clears throat> I unfortunately am not. Oh, okay. No. But you have to take <laughs> writing. Yes, yeah. I do. Uh -huh. um, some of the courses that are required for theater majors here are uh, history of musical theater with you, which mm -hmm. I absolutely love. Um, stagecraft and lighting, that's a great experience to have uh, with Tom O'Neill. Um, just going up through the rafters of Scone was... <laughs> just that alone. Oh, that but was the, scary. It also, because you're an acting major, yeah? Yes. Yeah, so it makes you learn the backstage stuff and appreciate... Yes, it, it definitely is. It gives like kind of a, ride, a wide variety of everything. Um, not just the acting part, but also what goes into the stage behind the scenes of crew, of lighting, mm -hmm. sound. It's it's such an awesome experience just to see come to life. Okay. Um, and then you also have to take as well um, acting technique, uh, basic acting, stage makeup, and then uh, for the last one, it's uh, I'm taking with you next semester uh, TPH, which is a the theater, theater production, production workshop. workshop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's, I can't wait for that one. That ends it all. That ends it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I love teaching it, so it's going to be fun. Uh, go, great. So, uh, Lee, just t dealing with the students like a, a Manny, you'll get these, uh, uh, I guess, a mix of, of, of types of students here. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Uh, with all these different majors. Have you had theater majors in the class? Is it, do you? I have. Um, you know, I've had theater majors in my class. Uh, you know, I've taught. Uh, you know, primarily English courses. Right, right. But for the last few years, I've been teaching the Introduction to Theater course. So um, I have some students who are really involved with theater. They know a lot about it, and some of them who, who know less about it. It's their first exposure mm -hmm. uh, to theater, and it's. I think it's. I think it's maybe. It's it's a wonderful gen ed course uh, to take it is. for uh, for students who may not necessarily be interested in pursuing theater, but it's exciting to see all of these different elements of the theater. It's such a great experiential course. Students do crew hours, they go to see the productions, they get to uh, see theater, you know, on, via video in the in the classroom, and then uh, it's just it's yeah more than they ever thought they were going yeah. to. You, exactly. you took intro to theater, didn't you? Did, yes, you, you I took, took intro, intro to theater. theater so and I that think was, it's a, that was a great experience too. Yeah, just learning the whole process of how theater came to be back in you know back in ancient Greek the history. history. Yeah, man. Yeah. It was fascinating mm -hmm. to learn, and then also with history of musical theater, yeah. I've learned so much that I had no idea about that you've been teaching, and it's just it's wonderful to see all this and just yeah. experience it too. And I think, uh, yeah, it's great to have people who are theater majors, but also those that had never experienced live right. theater at all to right. open their eyes to uh, to this, this the world of theater, this wonderful yeah. world of theater. And it's been very, I've been very lucky in that with the sections that I've taught, I've had at least some students who have had some exposure to theater. So we were just talking about this right before we uh, came on air here, the uh -huh. idea that if it comes from the students, there's so much value in that, to have the conversation um, initiated by the students, you know, students sharing things that they've experienced with right. theater right. Um, and providing that to the other students. I mean, that's what that's what it's all about. Yeah, you know, yeah, being yeah. Being in a class. Uh -huh. Yeah, and, I, 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 and it being a gen ed course, meaning anybody can take it right. uh, because it's a humanities, uh, it's just so much much fun to, to, to bring theater into their life. So it's, it's really cool. So yeah. glad you brought that up. Um, so Manny, when you audition for, for things here at Bergen, is it uh, hard? Is it a difficult process? Um, I mean, everyone has a different process of how they take to it. Mm -hmm. um, for me personally, what I do is that I, I really sit down and I look at what I'm auditioning with, the pieces that I'm given, um, and I also kind of look at the story to understand it a little bit. I mean, I don't know the whole thing. I just look at like a summary of it mm -hmm. um, and try to understand certain characters. And I say, you know, I, I could, I really like this character and I want to audition for this character or I want to audition for this character. Or even if you don't know which character you really want to go for, just, just to look at all of them and just be like, hmm, you know, I'd, I'd be happy with whatever I get. Right, right, um, right, right. And then just looking at all the pieces that I have and I kind of look at it and I try to memorize it as much as I can and um, just really have different takes on it, you know, different emotions you can feel. And you just got that the day of the audition. Yes. Right? So you just got the side, the piece of the script there. Yeah, and so you especially take time for, to really... um, for Into the Woods mm -hmm. when we, uh, luckily we had the, um, the music uh, for the audition mm -hmm. ahead of time and just listening to it, you know, over the track and also trying to find different, like, takes on it. Mm -hmm. it's, definitely, it's definitely a little bit difficult at times because you're trying to get out of your comfort zone. Right. But as soon as you can kind of hone in on it and really understand it, it's such an amazing experience. Mm -hmm. Lee, what was the process? Because in grad school with the BFA, uh, auditions were a little bit more difficult. Well, <laughs> you know, we would typically, 
when we auditioned for shows, we would typically have to bring in a piece of music, you know, our own. Right. You know, just like, Your audition you know, piece, just right. like you would if you were. Rather than <clears throat> when we auditioned for Into the Woods, we had the music mm -hmm. that, that you wanted to hear. Uh, so that was always interesting. You know, if we, if we were doing a particular piece, we might try to audition with something written by that composer, but maybe not from the same show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm thinking of an example, uh, auditioning for The Most Happy Fella, um, you know, written by Frank Lesser, mm -hmm. and so then, uh, you know, instead auditioning with something, you know, something, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Lesserous, but uh -huh. not that, uh -huh. you know, ex from that. Or Rogers, show. if it was Laurie, that to come in with something from right. Carousel or something right. like that. Exactly. that right, exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So it was a little bit different. But for this audition, you know, it was great that we knew what uh, we were expected to sing. I yeah. think it was 16 bars mm -hmm. um, that we were asked to do: one song for women, one song for men. For, uh, for women, it was No One Is Alone, which mm -hmm. is one of my favorite it's songs. Beautiful song. Beautiful song. And I thought, oh, this is so great that this is the audition song because if, if I do get cast, there's no way I'm playing Cinderella. So uh, at least I get a chance to sing it with the, you know, with the piano. <laughs> but you never know. You never, you know. never know. You never know. <laughs> but I think uh, you've made some valuable points that, that when you're auditioning in the real world outside of a, a college, it will be come in with audition material. And I think right. you've got some advice there is find somebody by that same composer or at least from that decade that the musical was written in right. um, to find uh, uh, the right, right, right piece that kind of matches the style. Right. Uh, I think I remember a lot of uh, actors would come in with things from Les Mis or something for Rodgers and Hammerstein audition. It's like right. you sing it great, but it doesn't give me the the, the tenor, the, the 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 feeling of right. the show that that that's there. So yeah. cool. <laughs> so it's not difficult to audition here. <laughs> you just kind of have to be ready for it. Yeah, and awesome. I love the fact that you uh, plan had uh, read some of the uh, bits about the play, so you know what you're getting yourself into yeah and to be open to any part because I uh, enemy of the people was your first one you really didn't yeah I I mean I um, I talked to um, Ken who was the director at the time um, you know he said if anyone has any questions or anything just let me know after the audition I went up to him and like hi Ken my name is Manny I mean this is my first time ever auditioning and I really don't know exactly what I want to go for you know do you recommend anything and he mm -hmm. was just like wow you know it's so brave for you to come up here and just tell me this and all this and then um at first, I actually got um, one of the townsfolk, but I was also the understudy to Captain Horster, and something uh, there was a conflict with the original um, member for her cast uh, member, yeah, yeah, yeah for yeah. the cast member, mm -hmm. and uh, so I stepped up, and just that whole thing was just so oh. that, wow. Yeah. Great was, words of wisdom. It's like never give up. <laughs> it really, right. anything can happen yes. until opening night, and you know, it, so so exactly. It, yeah, it's so just it's, like, it's just have your mind open. You know, just also be ready. That's that's what it is. Is that. Mm -hmm. It's especially going in for my first play. I was so nervous getting on stage. Like I felt like I froze a few times, and I probably did. But it was with Ken, and Ken is such a teddy bear Ken, of a director he that he's like a, a he's, he's a great it. director, and uh -huh. I love him so much. Um, but also just being, like I said, just being prepared for it, and then also just trying to maybe take a different road of the character instead of having like the regular character that you know that a lot of people go for, you know, try to make it a little bit different and uh -huh. go in a different direction. And I did that with him. And Fine then Ken yeah. was like, I like that. Uh -huh. Oh, cool, 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 cool. Well, we're going to get into talking about Into the Woods, but we do have to take a very short break. So uh, please come right back, and we'll be talking more with Manny and Lee about Into the Woods. Mental illness is illness just like any other illness. If you, ha if you broke your leg, you wouldn't feel bad that you went to the doctor. You wouldn't be ostracized by your friends for getting, uh, being on crutches or having a, a cast. Um, and the same should be true for mental illness. It's a disease within your brain. You should feel comfortable to seek treatment. Treatment is extremely successful. So we want people to feel like it's okay to talk about it. It's okay to look for help. It's okay to live with mental illness. The things we don't do, men, is we don't reach out to the programs that are available to us. If it's Bergen Promise, if it's Care Plus, if it's EPA, if it's your local insurance company, uh, we don't reach out. But the services are there for someone. And when you use the services, they're great. You got to reach out to them and you got to go in and talk to people and get the help that you need. Hi, welcome back to Bergen Stages Television. I'm excited because we're talking about the wonderful musical Into the Woods with our guests, Lee Janitis and Manny Marquez. Um, so when we left, we were talking about the audition process here. And I do have to give a disclaimer. I'm directing the show. Uh, and so I'm very, very close to what uh, we're going to be talking about now. Um, but we auditioned, and you both got cast. Uh, and Manny, you're playing the narrator. Yes. Uh, and who is the narrator? Um, the narrator, well, 
the story of Into the Woods, um, it's basically just the fairy tale stories we all know and love that we've heard about, um, you know, Little Red and the Big Bad Wolf. Um, you also have Cinderella, stepmother, and stepsisters. You also have the witch. You also have uh, the baker and the baker's wife. You have Jack. Um, and his mother. And his mother. And Little Red. Little Red. <laughs> the wolf. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, did all it's, that. Yeah, yeah, it's, good. Yeah. Like there's so it. many different yeah, characters. <laughs> um, and then the narrator is just, he's just, you know, going through the story and just telling the audience about what they already know. Well, we've kind of set it up that you are coming through the woods and stumble upon the yes, story. Yes, which I actually, I love this so much because uh -huh. we've taken such a different approach for where the, uh, the narrator usually comes out with like, you know, a suit or a tuxedo and just like, oh, well, once upon a time. But what you did, I love it so much because it's so different where I'm just a, a hiker in the woods and I stumble upon a fairy tale book. And then I open it, and that's when it starts. Comes to life. And yeah. it yeah. comes to life, yeah. and it's yeah. my interpretation of what I think the fairy tale stories are. Uh -huh. And I think that's such an amazing concept that it's just so different great, from what great. we've oh, already good, seen. Good, good. I agree. Oh, thank you. Can I, can I, can I speak to that? <laughs> yes, for you a may second? speak. <laughs> I do. I've been thinking about it a lot because it is. It's a different kind of conceit for the for the narrator. Yeah. And um, you know, initially when the show uh, was produced, I think you know James Lapine talks about how he envisioned the baker and the baker's wife as these sort of outsider kind of characters. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you know now. Into the Woods is so ubiquitous. You know, it's been around for over 30 years now, and people really know this yeah, show. Yeah, Not everybody yeah, yeah. who comes to see it will know it, but many people will know it. The Baker and the Baker's Wife have sort of taken on their own fairy tale role. Yeah. You know, yeah. so the that narrator. It makes sense. You almost think, why did I miss that one growing right, up? Right, right, yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah. You're like, oh, that's just a different fairy tale. I didn't quite know. Yeah. Um, so, so having the narrator serve as that outsider role, almost like sort of as an agent for yeah. the audience, I think makes so much sense, mm -hmm. especially in, um, you know, today's time, 30 years out from the original production of the show. And I think that that's, you know, that's why, that's why we do theater, the same theater pieces again and again, is to find the new things in them, to make them relevant yes. yeah. to whatever yeah. it is yeah. we're Especially doing. with the history now that it has, it yeah. makes it, yeah, much more. So, uh, so the narrator gets us through these stories. Yes. Uh, and then, uh, and we'll get into act two in just a second there. And so Lee, you yeah. have, a, and you have a daughter. Uh, <laughs> 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 an adopted a daughter. Rapunzel. Right, daughter. right. We, I think we left her yes. out of the, the group of people that we have here. Um, you come in and you talk to the baker and baker's wife. What is their situation? Right. And how did you get involved with get involved them? In yeah. this, so yeah. uh, the first time you see the witch, she comes in um, and she is explaining a curse that she's placed on the house mm -hmm. of you know the baker and the baker's wife. And this curse rests on um, a misdeed that his father did, which uh -huh. is that he ended up uh, stealing from the witch's garden. So with that plug, <laughs> yeah. uh, I think we're, do you mind doing a little bit of, uh, of, yeah, of, of yeah, what, sure, what, what happened with this curse? Because sure. I think it's it's a cool little rap thing that yes. they've written in this. Yeah. And you do such a great job. So uh, uh, so Lee's yeah. going to do a little bit of the witch. Sure. So um, she explains to the baker that um, when the baker's mother was with child, she had developed an unusual appetite. She took one look at my beautiful garden and told your father what she wanted more than anything in the world was greens, greens, and nothing but greens, parsley, peppers, cabbages, and celery, asparagus, and watercress, and fiddle ferns, and lettuce. He said, all right, but it wasn't quite, because I caught him in the autumn in my garden one night. He was robbing me, raping me, rooting through my rutabaga, raiding my arugula, and ripping up the rampion, my champion, my favorite. I should have laid a spell on him right there. Could have turned him into stone, or a dog, or a chair. But I let him have the rampion I'd lots to spare in return. However, I said, fair is fair. You can let me have the baby that your wife will bear, and we'll call it square. <laughs> good, that's good, yay, yay. So, um, you know, she acquires Rapunzel, who mm -hmm. is the daughter, mm -hmm. um, and then that becomes pretty much the most precious thing in the world to her. Um, the curse that she's laid on the house is, of course, she's stolen the baker's sister mm -hmm. and also um, made it so that they're, they will be barren, that they won't be able to have a child. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. want to be able to have a child, so they need to go into the woods to reverse the curse. And this is a big part of it. It's wishes. Yeah. It's right. about wishes. And all of these characters and every one of these fairy tales wish for something, right. whether it's a better life, a Cinderella to go to the ball, and these guys wish for a child, yeah. uh, the baker and the baker's wife. And so you send them on a mission to collect to collect the cow as white as milk, the cape as red as blood, the hair as yellow as corn, the slippers pure as gold. All of us. <laughs> <laughs> so they had to get these four difficult ingredients. It's, right. you know, uh, and so they traipse off into the woods to find these ingredients. And of course, along the way, um, they had 
found some beans that the father had given, uh, had mm -hmm. stolen in the pocket. Yep. And of course, that gets the beans to Jack. Yes. Can yeah. you take it from there? <laughs> I think I can. Um, so they give the beans to Jack in exchange for his cow as white as milk. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, that's the story of Jack and the Beanstalk, which is a great story. I love it so much. That's uh -huh. one of my favorite fairy tale stories. Um, and then also with the other ingredients as, uh, as well, you have the cape as red as blood, which is also Little Red's cape. Uh -huh. So you see the interaction between the baker and her and uh, how he gets the cape. Then you also have the hair as yellow as corn, which is for Rapunzel, um, for her long, beautiful hair. Uh -huh. um, but there's kind of a twist at the end of it, which is, it's very interesting. Yep, yep. Um, and then we also have, lastly, which is the slipper as pure as gold, which is for Cinderella. Uh -huh. um, usually in the stories, we know that it's a glass slipper, but in the original story, it's actually the, the slipper as gold. pure as gold. Yeah. So they went back to uh, the Grimm's fairy yes. tale. They really went back and, yeah. and, and took those yeah, and put them to life. Yeah. Great. Um, and so they get these ingredients. So what is the witch wish, what is her? Because everybody in this has a wish. Right, and we don't quite know at first. Uh -huh. You know, can I share that? Yeah. <laughs> so she, um, you know, she's this, you know, ugly, unattractive um, uh, witch. Uh -huh. And but then what she's actually looking for is to uh, return to her original state of youth and beauty. And so that's what. Ostensibly, that's what she wants, but you know, we've talked about this too. What is her real motivation? The reason that she really wants to be younger and more beautiful is because she wants to hold on to Rapunzel. Mm -hmm. You know, Rapunzel mm -hmm. has now grown up and she's a teenager and you know. And sees who her mother is. And, and sees, sees who her young, mother yeah, is, yeah. and she, um, she really wants to hold on to Rapunzel. Mm -hmm. So that's really what her wish, I think, is about. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's such a touching story too, because it's about parenting so much, right. yeah. and and that a, a parent thinks they need to do something like this in order to make their <laughs> right. children like them better. Yeah. And it's like, stop it! Right. Stop, just be you, be my mom, be, you know. But but she doesn't. She thinks this is what you need to do because, you know, I'm ugly. That's why you don't like me right. and all this kind right. of stuff. So I think it's, it's no. It, it, yes, it has to be because she's ugly, not because she's locked her in a tower for right. years on end, <laughs> <laughs> away from everybody. Right. And all this. Exactly. And of course, she falls in love. A prince uh, rescues her, and uh, and we'll get into her story a little bit later. Um, so we finish the act. Uh, it does end. Yeah, with the happily ever after happily that everyone ever knows, and yeah, I love it. Yeah, that's that's my song. It's just ever after. Uh -huh. um, it's such a great song, and it has everything's kind of wrapped yeah. up. Yeah, uh, you know, you have uh, Rapunzel with her prince. You have the witch who reversed the curse. You have the baker who now has a child. Mm -hmm. um, you have um, Jack who slayed the giant, who has his cow the wealth. back. They've got the they wealth. Have wealth. Yeah, that they uh, little Red, she she killed the wolf. Um, and Cinderella, she fell in love with the prince, and then you know the stepsisters as well. It's it's a funny yeah, story. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> um, and then it's just everyone knows what happens, and they usually, like you said, they walk out they after go, okay, I guess the we're first done. act. We're done. And first act's over. No. Well, happily ever after is what they're supposed to do. Not at all. And then Act Two comes up. The and brilliant James Lapine and oh. Stephen Sondheim would not say <laughs> no. That's not why we're doing this yeah. musical. That's why they did it in grade school. Yep. But so what's the uh, twist in so Act Two? So what I love about Act Two is that. Um, it's actually, from what I've read and what we've talked about, it's actually the narrator's um, kind of perspective of the stories yeah. after mm -hmm. the Happily Ever Afters. And it's so fascinating to, to really look into it and to actually read it. This is why I love this place so much. I fell in love with it as soon as we started doing the cold reads and everything. Uh -huh. It was fantastic. Um, and Act Two is just the story afterwards. You know, mm -hmm. you have all these people that are still with their wishes and like they all got what they wanted. But as the story progresses, you see that in the real world, happily ever afters really don't ever happen. And we all hope it. Exactly. We all uh, hope for you know, it we, to happen. We make a wedding so beautiful with the cakes and yes. we've got dresses right. and all and that stuff and say, now you're gonna live happily ever after. Yep. And you just see with certain characters that, um, for example, like um, there was another bean that was misplaced and so what happened is that another beanstalk grew, and we know the story that Jack slayed the giant, which is the male giant, mm -hmm. but his wife comes down and starts wreaking havoc ac across the land and starts destroying castles and starts killing people. To seek revenge. To for, seek revenge. For, to, well, she's looking for Jack. Yes. Uh, that's all it is. It's so simple, just give yeah. up Jack. And you're instigating that, too. You realize... Mm -hmm. um, that would solve it all, yeah. right? Yeah, <laughs> let's just do it. You know, why don't we do that? She's the realist uh -huh. in, yeah. in the second uh -huh. act. Yeah, you know? yeah. 
Um, so I think it's something about also be careful what you wish for. That's yeah. exactly what you know, it is. Kind of in this because if you get it, and then what do you do with that lottery that you want? You know, yeah. right. you got to be careful because there's going to be people coming at you all over that. Uh, you know, uh, uh, that's an extreme of it. But so we have to watch what we wish for. And and I think the witch is the realist going. You know, we can protect all these people if we just give yeah. the giant the boy. It really but is. But this community comes together. And mm -hmm. I think there's something important about the community coming together that yeah. helped protect him from, from the, you know, the desire to do that. Yes, that makes logical sense. Right. But right. morally, it's, yeah. can it's a we question do of morals. this? Can we just sacrifice someone for us to be, to be, be well being? Right. So so loaded. This, this it, it really is. There like, there's so, so, much into it. so much into it. It's about, it. you know, single parenting. <sighs> also about what's right and what's wrong mm -hmm. and it's and just, the gray in between yes yeah. exactly yeah, yeah 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 it's such yeah. a lovely story like uh -huh. i just uh so i get hang around for act two it. because it is so important <laughs> it act is so important really act two us really is that you know and be careful of what you, you your your song at the end yes right oh. well you're, you're thinking about children yeah, yeah 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 i mean the the sort of lesson that we learn about what children here, right? So the line, children uh, may not obey, you know, and as a mother, th this is absolutely true. I know this to be true, but they will listen, yeah. uh, which means that they're following and they're watching what it is that we do. So uh -huh. we, we have to be really, really careful. Yeah, with that. yeah, yeah. Um, and that's, you know, that's where it becomes really, really powerful. Uh -huh. And right. I do think that no, no one is alone is is also oh, oh, a yeah. huge um, a piece There's of what they're second saying. Second act is loaded with all those great, yeah, yeah no yeah. more. No more. Uh, right. Just has such great, uh, uh, and and that Sondheim music right. is challenging. Right. It is. Uh, I have to say the cast came in so ready to do this musical that uh, it made Jess Abrams our musical director. So job so easy. They know this stuff. This yeah. is fun. Yeah. You guys <laughs> were so ready to, to do this musical that uh, what we thought were going to be difficult songs it came in knowing, yeah. which has made, been great. But I it, think, it's still challenging. Yeah. I think the best was Lee. When we first heard the rap, she just went like this and it was like yeah. It's like, how did you do that? <laughs> you, boy, all those words came out. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like, wow. Words. Um, and then I just, I, I love the music near the end is when, because um, I, I, I do miss choir every single day. Uh -huh. um, it was so fun just being able the beautiful to. beautiful blending. The blending. Uh -huh. And then now it just, it, it's such just, um, I'm trying to think of the word. It, it, it's such a like kind of memory that I've had that I've longed for for so long. Yeah, it's just. Yeah. Having those blends. I'm glad at you can feel it because end. we hear it out in the theater, yeah. hearing this, this the whole group come on, all 22 just, actors come on. It's stage so and amazing. Those are my favorite everything. songs to perform. Yes. is when uh, we're all together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the the talent in yeah. this cast. Is talent. So we have everyone amazing. is so we're, we're, talented. Now we're into the te we're heading into technical rehearsals. We're yep. tweaking all the roles and and all the blocking to get it ready for opening night. Right. Uh, we have Marie. Natalie, putting costumes on you. Uh, we we uh, had the publicity shot with you <laughs> with the with the makeup, <laughs> right. uh, which is uh, a challenge. Right, and, and shout out to Mary Clifford and Mia who yes, are yeah, helping yeah. me because uh, with, it's with those certain, prosthetics. It's really yeah. difficult makeup, but yeah. and what I love is it's fun to be ugly. You know, a lot of people go, "Oh no, I have to be ugly." It's like, no. no, it's kind of fun to be this creepy, ugly uh, witch. Well, I mean, I think a big fun. part of the character too is going the back and forth, you know, between beautiful and ugly, mm -hmm. you know, and what that actually mm -hmm. means. Mm -hmm. and, you know, we have a cool set of. Woods, of course, and all yeah. the stuff William yes. Anderson has done. Uh, Jared Salzman's doing lighting, which, as you will find out, the lighting is such an important element to this show yeah. um, with the shadows because there's so yeah. much the shadows give us uh, in this show. Um, and we'll put it together with the pit. Uh, we have uh, Matt Owitz doing some props for us. Yes. Uh, we have uh, Allison Hancock's doing our stage management, so they're keeping so busy. So we just have a great uh, group of people uh, come together. Uh, Stephen Schwartz is already working on your microphone so that we can mm -hmm. have great audio yeah. for you. So I've just kind of plugged everybody in the show. <laughs> uh, but the show is coming up. Uh, we open uh, the Friday right after uh, Thanksgiving. So yeah. we're yeah. ready to do it. So uh, opening night is uh, the 30th of November. And it runs for that weekend and then the following weekend. I think it's the 6th, 7th, and 8th of December. Only seven performances over at the Anna Maria Saccone Theater. Um, you can get your tickets at tickets.bergen.edu or drop by our uh, box office in A130 in our main building here at uh, the Paramus campus. Um, guys, we're done. Thank you so much for being on the show. <laughs> it's so just much been for so us awesome. Yes, thank you. Break a leg with the show. We can't wait to see it. All right? And thank you for watching, and we'll see you again next time on Bergen Stages Television.